In this short video, we're going to talk about some of the differences between STEM eBIC and SEM eBIC, and uh, specifically why it's so important that NEI's STEM eBIC system is developed specifically for, for doing eBIC in the TEM. So very generally, EBIC, which stands for electron beam induced current, is the measurement of current generated in a sample by an incident electron beam. Uh, the most common form of EBIC, which is called, which we refer to as standard EBIC, involves the separation of electron hole pairs that are induced by the beam and local electric fields. And this typically has a yield relative to the incident beam current of something like one to a hundred. Um, so if you have a one nanoamp beam current, your standard EBIC signal is going to be something like a nanoamp up to hundreds of nanoamps. Um, this is most commonly observed in the SEM, uh, and it's occasionally seen in STEM over the years. Uh, but this is most of the EBIC that's done in the world is, is this type of contrast. Uh, more recently, we've demonstrated uh, CBIC or secondary electron emission EBIC, um, which is an entirely different contrast mode which measures the holes left behind when the electron beam ejects secondary electrons from the sample. And the yield here is much smaller, something like a factor of, of 100 to 1,000 to even more than that, depending on uh, the particulars of your sample. Um, so this much smaller signal is typically only observed in STEM, uh, in part because it requires much more sensitive electronics, but also because in the SEM, uh, you have a lot more beam interaction going on. Uh, the electron beam generally gets absorbed into the sample to a large degree. You also have multiple scattering events like backscattered electrons coming back up and generating uh, many more secondary electrons. And all these other processes seem to obscure this kind of primary beam generation of secondary electrons that CBIC measures. Uh, talking generally about measuring EBIC in the SEM, regardless of what type of contrast you're measuring and what EBIC mode you're looking for, in the SEM, you generally have a lower beam energy, thicker samples, and, and all this makes for a larger interaction volume, which generally means that whatever EBIC signal you're measuring, it's going to be much larger in the SEM, and, and that means it's simply much easier to detect. Uh, and the point I'm trying, trying to drive home here is that when you're measuring standard EBIC current in the SEM, that current is orders of magnitude larger than the currents that are expected for STEM EBIC, and especially if you're looking at CBIC. And just to put some numbers on it, uh, the typical CBIC signal we see is on the order of picoamps. And if you take a look in the literature at SEM EBIC, and even a lot of the time STEM EBIC, they're typically measuring nanoamps up to hundreds of nanoamps of current. Uh, so it's very, very important that we have designed this system specifically for looking at CBIC and uh, lower, these lower current levels that you typically see in STEM EBIC. Uh, if you'd like to know more about STEM EBIC, um, please check out any of these resources here. And as always, uh, feel free to send us an email if you have any questions about our STEM eBIC system or about eBIC in general.